Tech Hawaii here at the Honolulu Biennial, a fantastic exhibit that we encourage everyone to check out. So we're here with one of the incredible, provocative artists that's here at the exhibit, um, Sama Al Shabi, and she has um, she's just doing some incredible work. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in and ask her some questions about it. So hello, and thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you, Ryan. I'm so happy to be here. It's just it's such a pleasure. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? as an artist? Um, I'm a Palestinian Iraqi. I was born in Iraq and uh, my life has been very much determined by forced migrations, political refugee to the United States. Um, so I'm not an American citizen, but that, that childhood I had and my upbringing of being in constant migration has really informed my work. I'm also a professor at University of Arizona, teach photography and video, and I'm showing a video work here at the Biennial um, called Wasl, which is the Arabic word for union. And it's part of a longer project, seven-year project called Silsila, which means link or chain link in Arabic. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that work and also its connection to um, Hawaii and other islands? Well, I was here a few years ago in 2014 for the Chain of uh, Fire prologue exhibition of the Biennial and um, was very taken by the many stories I heard of the impending issues with, with uh, climate change and the rising global seas. It connected to the work I had been working on for seven years. Um, I'm from a semi-arid dry desert region where the end of water and water stress then to fresh water is um, really uprooting lives and creating conflict on the ground. It's one of the source uh, issues of how many wars are starting over people's placements, jobs, um, the end of the agrarian lifestyle. And I was also participating in the Venice Biennial in 2013. Um, I was invited <clears throat> by the Maldives Pavilion and they're also uh, f uh, facing a kind of climate uh, uh, absolutely yeah, issue because they're going to be drowning under the the waters. Are, their 2080 is the year that they're supposed to go underneath the water. So I was connecting these issues in my work, but the end of fresh water um, in the Middle East and North Africa, and linking these stories to other communities that are facing uh, disaster, environmental disaster, and that how we need to be working together and cooperating together because we're in a global system, we're in an environmental system. What happens in one place affects another. That is absolutely true. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the work itself and how it shows that interconnection? Um, <clears throat> the video is produced over seven years of um, most of the countries of the Middle East and North Africa. There's about three countries missing just because I wasn't able to get a visa to go into them. And Maldives and Hawaii. And I use the um, my own body uh, in all of these locations, mostly really remote locations, deep into the desert, off the grid, places that I discovered primarily um, through word of mouth and conversations, but really looking at an old text of um, Ibn Battuta, who is, the, the term is the Marco Polo of the East, a 14th century epic traveler, who um, started off in Morocco and walked across North Africa, throughout the Middle East, Maldives, and all the way to China. And, and he traveled for about almost 30 years of his life. And with the young scribe, with the young scribe, uh, and all those notes that he had, put down very meticulous details of the places that he visited. Uh, including um, information about the cultures, the languages, the what people would dress and wore, the flora and the fauna and the environment. And so it was kind of a roadmap for me. So, so this inspiration really um, kick-started a journey for you, um, this woman who has had this complex interaction with the land to sort of begin, if not recreate that journey, to sort of begin one of your own. Yes, and how has that been, do you think, if that's correct? Yeah, that's in indeed correct, and this was actually a migration by choice. And when you think about the eco-refugees that I'm concerned with in my work and political refugees, it's one thing for me um, to make a choice to travel into these places and, and, and perform these um, acts that I do in my video and my work. Um, willingly and to, to see what the situation is there and to be able to tell these stories to audiences globally um, for those who don't have that opportunity or platform to do so. That is, um, I, I, you know, important. Thank you so much for your work. I hope, I wish you the best of success here at the Biennial and um, thank you so much and goodbye everybody out there um, from the Honolulu Biennial. Be sure to check it out.